Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're talking about Advent of Code, which is one of my favorite parts of the year. Uh, Advent of Code is a series of 50 puzzles that will come out over 25 days, and I will be streaming all of these on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash anthonywritescode, right as they come out at midnight Eastern on every day, unless, well, <laughs> it's possible some other stuff will come up and I won't do this um, on all those days, but anyway, I'm going to try and stream every day. Uh, I've been doing this since 2018, and the puzzles have been around since 2015. Uh, I have repositories on my GitHub for each of these, and I'm going to walk you through my template and how I go about solving these today. Uh, it has a bunch of neat little utilities that make this, you know, easier to deal with or uh, faster to automate. I don't know. I'm a nerd. I want to go fast. Uh, I usually try and get points in Advent of Code. There's been a few years where I've been in the top 100 for some of the problems. Uh, I just missed being top 100 overall last year, and it's my goal to be there uh, at the end. I was there for a bunch of the intermediate days, but not in the final day. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to walk you through my template and how I go about doing this. The cool thing about Advent of Code is you can do this in whatever programming language you want. It's entirely language agnostic. I usually do my solutions in Python. However, I've dabbled in you know, 20 other programming languages just to try them out for Advent of Code. I have also done some of them in meme languages like uh, you know, Google Sheets or SQLite. Uh, SQLite, I think, is my specialty for these. Uh, but yeah, they're just kind of fun problems. The difficulty of the problems relatively ramps up as the days go on, uh, starting with very easy and getting to very difficult. Of course, the problems are varying in you know, approach and complexity, so some problems might be really easy for some people, and they might be really hard for other people. Um, I would posit that anybody that has done any amount of code should be able to do at least a few, few couple of days. Uh, Advent of Code is also a really good resource to learn to program or to uh, you know, study for interview prep. Uh, one of my friends who uh, wasn't a programmer used Advent of Code as a way for her to learn programming, and she was able to get to like day 15 plus. So yeah, you can, you can use this as a learning tool as well, which I think is really cool. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into my template and show you how to go about doing that. Uh, before you get started, you'll want to sign up for Advent of Code. You can either do that by logging in with GitHub, Google, Twitter, <laughs> assuming it survives, um, or, or Reddit, uh, and you can create accounts that way. I have logged in with my, <laughs> I would say second GitHub account, but I'm on my fourth now because I screwed up the video for the first three. But anyway, we're on, we're on a brand new GitHub account, um, and we're going to be solving day one to show you how my template works. Okay, so if you want to work from my template, basically you'll clone this repo or any of these repos and fork them. I would pick <laughs> pick the newer ones, so 2015, well, newer. Pick the ones that I have touched more recently. So 2015 is the one that I'm gonna be basing this video off of, so maybe take a look at that, or in future years you can look at other ones. Um, but yeah, I've, I've already cloned this repo and I've already done the first setup step which is you're gonna to wanna to create a .env file and it's gonna look like this. I've already created it, I'm not gonna show you the contents. It's gonna contain your session cookie from the website. This is so that we can automate downloading and uploading uh, submissions. You can get your session cookie in Chrome by doing inspect, going to application, clicking on cookies, and inside cookies it'll show your token. So don't show it on screen because otherwise other people will get it. Uh, in Firefox it's simple, or, or it's, it's similar but a little simpler. Uh, cookies is just shown directly in storage. Okay, but I have downloaded that already and I have this little m file uh, and now I'm going to show you how I set up my environment here. So this repository is designed to have a Python virtual env at the root named venv. So we're going to do this. You'll notice it got auto activated here. This is because I have set up activator. Um, if you want to figure out what activator is, google this. It's two a's. Yes, it's intentional. No, it's not a typo. Um, it's an auto activator. Next, we're going to install the requirements.txt. This contains PyTest as well as a small support library that I've written. This support library has a few common patterns that I've used throughout Advent of Code, and it also has some helper scripts that make it more automated for speed solving. Uh, those scripts are all prefixed with AOC dash, so you'll see there's AOC download input, AOC submit, and AOC 25 part two. Spoilers, uh, minor spoilers, day 25 is a little bit different. Uh, so I'm going to get started with the template. We're going to try and solve day one here. Uh, I can't actually read this prose because it's intellectual property, so we're going to not actually read this, but summarize the problem quickly. 
Um, so it looks like we are given an input that has open and close parentheses. Open goes up one floor, close goes down one floor. Okay, and then the result is just the floor number. Cool, that seems pretty easy to solve. Uh, let's start by copying day zero to day one. This is how I do my solves themselves. And we're gonna CD into day one. Usually I don't CD around projects, but for this, it's pretty convenient. Next, we're gonna run AOC download input. Uh, you don't have to pass any arguments. It automatically figures out what day and what year from the directories. And it shows you a little bit of the output. When I'm speed solving, sometimes this is really useful to get an idea of how I'm gonna parse it before I've even started writing any of the code or reading any of the problem. Like for instance, if I saw this in an output, I might think you know, brace matching or increment decrement or something like that. And in fact, if I had guessed increment decrement and then read the problem, I'd be much further ahead in, in solving it. So it kind of shows you a little bit of the output before it goes. And there's an ellipsis if it cuts it off. Uh, it's also saved that into input.txt. So this is my full input. Uh, you can also get this manually by clicking on get your puzzle input and copy and pasting this, but I find that that's pretty error prone and this is much simpler. Okay, um, so let's uh, next jump into our actual solution thing. I've made a little harness that makes it easy to test and uh, produce output as well as do some rudimentary timing. Uh, you'll implement your entire solution inside of this compute function. It has a few helpers here uh, for common problem uh, structures. We're not actually parsing numbers here. We're not actually splitting lines. So it was kind of useless to have this here, but sometimes it's easier and better if I have this pre-built template to solve quickly. I don't know, I'm, I'm optimizing seconds here for maybe, <laughs> maybe no reason. Uh, let's actually grab one of these inputs and use it as our test case. Uh, the default template only has a single test case, but of course you can add more inside this parameterize. So if we paste our example here, and this I believe had an expected of three, uh, and if we run our test now, you'll see that it is failing. Well, it's failing. <laughs> it's failing for the wrong reason. Let's make it not crash. Uh, let's just make it return zero here. Yeah, so you'll see that, uh, you know, we have a failing test. We have something we can work on. We can validate our solution before we submit it. And let's go about implementing this. Uh, I'm actually gonna implement this intentionally wrong <laughs> just to show you what it looks like and when it submits when it's wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, but, but basically the uh, idea of this is to have a number and for character in S, if C is an open paren, we are going to increment one, S equals one, L if C is equal to close paren and minus equals one. Otherwise, if we get some other character, let's just raise an assertion error because we don't expect other characters. Uh, unexpected character C. Let's do this so that we see what character it is. And then at the end, we return N. Uh, now if we run our test right now, you'll see, oh, <laughs> yeah, we have an unexpected uh, character new line. We can fix that by doing strip here. Uh, and now our test is passing. We can also run our input using uh, the script directly. So this will print the number and how much time it took. Of course, the timing is useless unless you have a normalized computer, uh, but I usually normalize against myself. So uh, that's something useful. Um, and if you want to submit, you can pass it directly to this AOC submit uh, part one script. So let's say that we had gotten the answer 300, for instance, which is not the answer, but um, it will try and submit it and it'll tell you what the website actually tells you because normally you would submit it here, but I like nerdy computer programs, um, but yeah. So if, if it's wrong, sometimes the website will give you a hint. Here it says it's too high. And if we instead pipe our program's output into AOC submit part one, uh, that, will <laughs> that will rate limit us because I have done this too quickly. But normally it'll submit the answer and then you'll see the actual output. I'll just wait a little bit and then I'll submit it. Uh, actually, no, we can we can talk a little bit more about this. So once you're done with part one, I usually copy part one to part two.py and then I start working on part two. Uh, whatever the, the, the problem usually has an easier part one and then a, a twist on it in part two. This is also very similar to how you would do a programming interview because uh, often, often when you do an interview, you start with a basic problem and then you add something onto it and add something onto it. And advent of code often does that. 
Uh, most days are independent. I say that with an asterisk. There was one year where half of the problems were dependent on building a uh, programming language and I had had <laughs> mixed mixed responses to that. Some people really liked the programming language. I really like the programming language, uh, but others were a bit frustrated by seeing int code every single day. Um, but yeah, usually they're independent. Sometimes there's some carryover from other problems. Uh, okay, let's try submitting again. Surely it's been enough time. Sweet, and then we get a little green thing. And if you if you actually submit on the website, you'll get a gold star, and then it'll take you on to uh, the second part of the problem. Uh, but anyway, that's that's advent of code uh, and my template, the the helper scripts. Uh, that basically it's just the downloader and submitter, and they basically just post to the website and uh, go from there. But yeah, I'm going to be doing this for 2022. I'm probably going to be working in Python because I want to go fast, and I will be streaming each of these on Twitch.tv/AnthonyWritesCode. I might do solution videos. I've done those in the past, but been so busy recently that I don't know if I'll get around to them. Either way, the VODs will go up on youtube.com slash at Anthony Wright's code dash VODs. Go to YouTube at Anthony Wright's code dash VODs. Uh, that's where my YouTube VODs go. So subscribe there if you want to see those. But anyway, I hope you enjoy Advent of Code as much as I do. Uh, and I'll see you on stream.